Cat Williams would share a clip on his Instagram story, which featured Diddy in an old clip on Nickelodeon show, All That. In the sketch, two young children are trying to wake up one of their friends who's asleep. The kids go to Diddy for advice on how to wake their friend up, and Diddy advises them to put a toy helicopter down the boy's pants and even supplies him with a toy helicopter and remote. What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. King of the pets, if you ask me, baby. Yeah, yeah, the keys is yours. You, you know, you get 16. You got to go. I'm good to go. Yeah. Y'all are not ready for this. Cat Williams just dropped a bombshell, revealing the exact footage the feds uncovered that led to Diddy's shocking arrest. And trust me, this is the kind of scandal that's about to shake Hollywood to its core. Now that Diddy has finally been arrested, shocking new details are coming out about his indictment. And it turns out the list of his victims is longer and victims are younger than we ever imagined. And this is exactly what Cat Williams has been trying to warn us about this for years. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TG Jakes, any of them, the, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. I didn't have no more of these. Amen, amen. New details on Diddy's arrest. It's official. Sean Diddy Combs has finally been arrested amid a flood of lawsuits accusing him of SA and DV, among other things. On Monday, September 16th, almost exactly a year after his ex Cassie dropped her bombshell lawsuit and got the ball rolling, Diddy was taken into custody at the Park Hyatt Hotel on West 57th Street, where he had been living for weeks. And according to NBC sources, Diddy was totally caught off guard when federal agents showed up. And <laughs> However, Diddy is definitely bothered now because U.S. Attorney Damian Williams confirmed that on the night of September 16th, federal agents arrested Diddy based on a sealed indictment from the Southern District of New York. And you know feds have like a 95% conviction rate. Plus it was a sealed indictment with a grand jury attached. They basically already said this man is guilty. Just bring him in so we can show him what we found. As we all know by now, since Cassie sued Diddy back in November, accusing him of years of physical and S mistreatment, the floodgates have opened. Other victims, most recently including former Daniti Kane member Don Richard, have also come forward. Richard claimed Diddy forcefully touched her without her consent and threatened her while she worked for him. And she even says she witnessed him put his hands on Cassie in front of other celebrities like Usher, Neo, and Interscope Records founder Jimmy Iovine. But what really caught the feds' attention was Cassie's allegations of ex-trafficking. Cassie claimed in her lawsuit that Diddy often physically mistreated her and forced her into sick acts with male ex-workers in substance-fueled parties that Diddy referred to as freak-offs. According to Cassie, Diddy would carefully arrange these freak-off sessions and personally record them. Cassie also said that back in 2018, as she tried to end things, Diddy forced his way into her home and Don Richard backed this up, adding that she saw drunk girls below the age being targeted by Diddy and his guests at these parties. Now, you probably remember how when Cassie first dropped her lawsuit in November 2023, Diddy immediately denied everything and accused Cassie of looking for a quick payday. But then in May, when CNN released that hotel video footage of Diddy and Cassie in a hallway, Diddy posted what was supposed to be an apology video on Instagram admitting his behavior was inexcusable and saying he sought therapy, although he never actually used the word sorry in the video or even mentioned Cassie. And of course, Diddy later deleted the video from his page. So yeah, you don't need to be a legal expert to see that Diddy is in real trouble. 
And the crazy part is that we probably still haven't heard half of the sick and twisted things this man has been doing during his reign of terror in the music industry. And this brings us to these latest reports that are extremely disturbing, alleging that the Fed's Discord, a ton of video recordings in Diddy's storage showing Diddy and his high-profile friends engaging in some kind of twisted, ritualized acts with young victims. Diddy's young victims, disturbing footage. So apparently, the Fed seized over 250 cameras from Diddy's homes back in March, and word on the street is there's footage of all your favorite rappers, celebs, athletes, and even politicians on those tapes. But see, there's another, much more sinister side to these rumors about the so-called freak-off tapes. Allegedly, it's not just a bunch of depraved celebrities letting loose. Those tapes are said to show young people below the age and under the influence, seemingly being initiated into some type of sick rituals with Diddy's powerful friends. So remember when Orlando Brown talked about that Balenciaga scandal and the so-called Panda Eyes ritual? You ever heard of uh, Panda? Like I was telling you, pa Panda. So you got Panda not is a really. Panda is a secret code for um, a certain thing. Um, and so when it comes down to that certain thing, um, it's so what it is is uh, you basically have a certain nerve in your rectum, and if you touch that nerve. You can turn a person into an animal. You can turn a person into whatever you want them to be if you just hold them down. So pretty much when you see black eyes like uh, Blueface and, you know, shit like that, he got beat up, but he didn't get beat up where you thought he got beat up. He got beat up somewhere else, okay? And so uh, the eyes come out and they call them panda eyes. And they do this to, so you see people with these cigars and they're, they, you know, all these big celebrities, they all have the cigar in common. That, that, that's that big ass thing between their legs that they're sticking in. And then Orlando also suggested that the parents of aspiring young entertainers are in on it too, essentially selling their kids to the industry. They're shipping and trafficking and people, adults, the moms, the dads, right there on Target commercials, right there on Walmart commercials. And you're looking at the people that are missing and they're smiling like they're happy, but they're going back to hell. So you have a private little beach full of celebrities and bodies getting screwed and nobody cares because they're supposed to be dead. And, and uh, this panda eye thing is, you know, the panda, 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 all that stuff is just, is so real. You know, you wanna go get fucked by Shaba until your eyes pop out, go ahead. I mean, that's up to you. But, uh, you know, I just think that, you know, people just need to realize what they're looking at when they're watching the television. Everything is right in front of you. The revolution was televised and don't nobody give a shit. What's even more unsettling is that Orlando isn't the only former young star to blow the whistle on this. Corey Feldman was out here trying to warn us about it a long time ago, and no one listened. I'm saying that there are people that were the people that did this to both me and Corey yeah. that are still working, they're still out there, and they're some of the richest, most powerful people in this business. And they are And they do not want me saying what I'm saying right now. Are, are you saying that they Yes. And that yes. they're still in this business? Yes. That's what, yeah, and that's what you were saying yeah. in your book. When you talk to, yeah. when you talk to parents, want me here right now. Trust Corey. Me. And then there's Cat Williams, who, just like Orlando and Corey, was declared crazy by the mainstream media, and his warnings were dismissed as nothing more than ramblings of an addict. But here we are in 2024, and just like Cat promised in his Club Shay Shay interview, all lies are getting exposed. And word on the street is that the feds found a whole bunch of footage at Diddy's house proving that Cat was right all along when he warned us what happens behind the scenes to young aspiring entertainers. Cat warned us. Cat warned us. For years now, Cat Williams has been trying to warn us about the alleged Hollywood rituals involving young victims and high-profile monsters in the entertainment industry. So we all know Cat made waves with his appearance on Shannon Sharp's club, Shay Shay back in January when he mentioned how Diddy tried to take him shopping, so to speak, and he had to turn down multiple lucrative offers because they came with some strings attached. But it gets more sinister than that. Propositioning adults with some salacious offers is one thing, and a lot of people turn this into a running joke about Diddy and industry men who allegedly agreed to these offers. But see, when you go after the young ones, that's when there's no room for jokes anymore. And this is exact. Cat touched on all kinds of topics during his chat with Rogan, but one part of Cat's interview that had a lot of fans backing him up 
was when he talked about those rumored demon-worshipping rituals in Hollywood. Kat went on about how the whole entertainment industry is nothing but a massive propaganda machine, with the entertainment part just there to keep people distracted. Whole industries can be built upon your ability to know how certain things are gonna hit certain people. And this was before we called things promotion and marketing, you know what I mean? Hollywood is not really there to entertain you. Like, that's great that that happens. But um, propaganda is something that is important to all civilizations. Kat didn't stop there. He dove even deeper, linking alleged Baphomet rituals to the whole dress-wearing controversy in Hollywood. Now, for some context, Baphomet is this demonic figure that shows up in occult and folkloric traditions. And supposedly, the Knights Templar were accused of worshipping it. Since the 19th century, Baphomet has been depicted as a mix of opposites, half human, half animal, half male, and half female, representing both good and evil. And then some Christian activists have recently started claiming that Baphomet is actually a symbol for the so-called trans agenda. And now check out what Kat said about these rumored Baphomet rituals in Hong. While a lot of people laughed off Kat's comments, others are fully convinced there's some truth to what he's saying about Hollywood rituals. And now, folks are connecting the dots to those rumors about Diddy being involved in dark rituals. In fact, people are saying those freak-off sessions mentioned in Cassie's lawsuit and more recently in Diddy's former producer, Rodney Jones's lawsuit, weren't just wild parties, but carefully planned rituals. If you remember, Cassie detailed in her lawsuit how Diddy would meticulously plan out those F.O. sessions, even arranging candles in a very specific way. She also claimed that Diddy made her and the other participants wear some kind of mask, all while he filmed the entire thing on camera. And this prompted one fan to speculate the way it was described in the lawsuit about Diddy filming Cassie on multiple devices, adjusting the candles and wearing masks while she was, sounds like some ex-cult ritual-ish. I think he was filming to show other rich elites. What's even more intriguing is that months before Cassie's lawsuit dropped, celebrity medium Sloane Bella went viral for a YouTube video where she claimed that many powerful industry men were harvesting their energy through these dark rituals with young people. Sloane Bella even alleged that Diddy's ex, Kim Porter, had witnessed some of these disturbing rituals at his parties and was reportedly planning to expose it all in her upcoming book. And they are dumbing it down to the fact that they think that P. Diddy is on some kind of spree for removing people who speak about this because he's gay. That is not the issue. There are gay people, but what we're talking about here is ritualistic sexual deviancy used to harness energy of a human being. Ritualized, thought out, planned specifically to rip the person down and hide behind their energy. But what if we're talking about a religion that hides behind the energy of the most innocent on this planet who are lit up energetically because it hasn't been broken. Sloan Bella didn't stop there. She even brought up Justin Bieber, suggesting he might have been a victim of these alleged rituals. She claimed this could be why Justin seems so broken and worn down these days. We know Bieber was famous as a teenager and all of that. How do you think he got that way? Because they harnessed his energy and presented him while him the self is broken. He is broken and a shell of himself because he has lost his sense of self. They stole that. That is what they wear. And since Diddy used to hang out with Justin a lot back in the day, and Justin even spent 48 hours living with Diddy when he was just 15, a lot of people started saying that Sloane Bella might be onto something about these supposed rituals. What's up, man? You good? I'm good. How are you All right, doing? young brother, everything's good? Everything's Selling great. out arenas and everything? Yeah. Starting to act different, huh? You, you, ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we used to hang out. Well, I mean, you haven't. I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Tell you my number. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it gets even darker from here. Back in 2014, the late comedian Trevor Moore shook things up with a sketch video for Comedy Central, featuring a young pop star clearly modeled after a young Justin Bieber, singing about how his parents sold him to a big producer in the music industry who forces him to do things he doesn't want to do. 
and looking back now, it seems a lot more sinister than just a joke. The song takes an even darker turn, with the young pop star detailing the disturbing things the producer allegedly forces him to do whenever he disobeys orders. It goes from shocking to downright chilling as the lyrics unfold. And then, things get even crazier. The producer jumps in, rapping about how he's the pop star's father figure, all while the poor singer keeps desperately saying, help me, and call the police. And get this, near the end of the song, the young singer says he needs help before they sacrifice him to Baphomet. Back in 2014, everyone laughed off the video, not really taking it seriously. But fast forward to today, and fans are now saying Trevor Moore clearly knew what was going on behind the scenes in the music industry and was trying to warn us all through his comedy. But hold up, because it gets even more sinister. On August 7th, 2021, Trevor tragically passed away in what was reported as an accident at his home. TMZ quickly claimed Trevor had fallen from his upstairs balcony around 2.30 a.m., and toxicology reports later suggested alcohol played a role. The timing and circumstances have some fans raising serious questions. Despite the official explanation, there's been a lot of skepticism surrounding Trevor's death. Many people just aren't buying the story and are convinced there's more to it than what's being told. Some even speculate that Trevor may have known something he wasn't supposed to and was silenced to keep him quiet. And now people are connecting Trevor's tragic passing to the recent controversies blowing up around Nickelodeon, Diddy, and the dark side of the entertainment industry as a whole. As many of you probably know, Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider has been under fire for years over allegations of inappropriate behavior towards young stars. And just recently, the shocking documentary Quiet on Set pulled back the curtain, offering a disturbing look into some of Nickelodeon's most popular shows. These are three predators who worked at Nickelodeon, all in a short amount of time. Hey guys, what are you for you? It was a toxic environment. It made me trust people less. We were there for so many hours. You get comfortable with people until you're not. I had no idea what I was saving my son from. It was a house of horrors. But just when we thought things couldn't get any crazier, an old clip of Diddy's guest appearance on Nickelodeon's All That has resurfaced on social media, showing him in a seriously bizarre scene with young stars. And get this, Dan Schneider allegedly personally invited Diddy to be on that episode. It's like all the pieces of the puzzle are falling into place, and 2024 is shaping up to be the year of exposure, just like Cat Williams predicted. After the recent Homeland Security raids on Diddy's two homes, Cat Williams took to his Instagram stories to drop a freshly resurfaced clip from Diddy's guest spot on All That. The episode originally aired back in 2002 and features two young actors, Jack DeSena and Brian Hearn, trying to wake up their friend, played by Shane Lyons. They first pour a bucket of what's supposed to be sour milk on him, and when that fails, they turn to Diddy for advice. And just wait until you see what Diddy actually suggests they do next. Sleep. What are we gonna do? I don't know. You know, in situations like this, yeah, I always ask myself, what would P Diddy do? Oh, uh, what would P Diddy do? Well, I don't know. Hey, let's ask him. Oh, okay. <laughs> P Diddy. So. We can't wake up Shane. You try symbols. Yep. What about sour milk? Didn't work. Tell you what. Take this toy helicopter. Put it down his pants. All right, we'll do it. We'll do. Come on, Nothing. 
didn't work. He's still asleep. Try this. <laughs> Shall I? By all means. So when this clip recently started making the rounds online, Cat Williams shared it on his Instagram stories and wrote in the caption, they're all in it. In other words, Cat Williams is basically saying, I told you so, because he's been ringing the alarm about the dark side of the industry for years. And while many think it all kicked off with Cat's appearance on Club Shay Shay, if you dig into his old interviews, you'll see he's been sounding this warning for decades. And despite his consistent messages, the media has always tried to paint him as crazy. And get this, they even reportedly tried to take away his kids from him after he started exposing some high-profile people. Yo, man, K, you cool, man? How you doing? Oh, I'm tonight, cooler than man. a fan. My they took my children from me. Yeah, I mean, I How was, terrible is that? I, I did want to ask, um, the cops, uh, you know, allegedly found some guns. And yeah, they always find guns. guns I never leave without. My girlfriend. <laughs> I'm on the middle of an interview, sir. <laughs> Sorry about it. Yo, they, let, they find guns and drugs now. Is drugs? That, that, that's what it was reported. Sir, you can look at my paperwork. There was no drugs. <laughs> Weed is not a drug. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, okay. do you think that's uh, safe for kids to be around guns and stuff like that? I mean, I'm just curious. How do you keep this kid safe without guns? They were in a lockbox that the police broke. Oh, okay, yeah. I I'm mean, saying, if the police come in and raid my place and break into my gun boxes, you're going to find guns. But these aren't... Well, I'm not in a gang. What difference does it make? Now, now, you, you were actually stopped for this and let go because you have a license for no, it, No, right? this is their ninth time coming to my house. The problem was this time they came to my office and took my kids from an office, not from my house, from an office. So now when I can't have my kids at my office, That's an issue. I must be yeah, yeah, the most terrible black dude. <laughs> because here's the whole thing. You gonna charge me with child endangerment? After I adopted seven children and had them for 14 years in this, in this uh, state? Really? You coming after my kids now? Cause it was already a witch hunt. Now you want my babies? Yikes. Martin Luther King and Malcolm X ended up dead for True. telling the truth. So as a comedian, I don't think it won't happen to me. I think they've thrown me in jail 36 times in 36 months. And I think I, you've never seen me in a court of law. That means they're effing with me. And today they crossed the line. Cause now they took my babies. As for Diddy's alleged connection to other rich and powerful predators, many fans are saying Diddy's arrest is just the tip of the iceberg. Many people believe there's a massive system in place that protects depraved criminals, not just in the entertainment industry, but reaching all the way to the top. So it'll be interesting to see what Diddy's trial uncovers and which of his powerful connections might get dragged down with him. One fan said, Diddler's connection to the political parties, Hollywood, and the music industry mafia was always concerning. Now he's going to be taken out like Epstein. And another person added, if Diddy got skeletons in his closet, Clive Davis, Jimmy Iovine, David Geffen, and Liar Cohen got graveyards. But what's your take on this? Do you think Diddy is just one of many powerful predators in the industry that Cat Williams tried to warn us about? Leave your thoughts in the comments and don't miss out on this next video.